Cool, recording. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. So, hey, welcome to um, the after summer edition of the Dynamic Data and Capabilities Working Group uh, meeting, bi weekly meeting. Uh, my name is Pedro, and uh, today we have uh, a lot of new faces. Um, so I will ask everyone that, that hasn't already done to put their name on the list of attendees on the notes, please. Um, and next step is to ask a volunteer to take notes. Does anyone want to be the note taker today? I was the last one, so. <laughs> you the last one? Ah, I, you were I, was, I was the last one, I think. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I, I can do it, but I've never done it before. Yeah, Jim. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's it's just a matter of of uh, tapping in the comments and, and questions and answers if people have them, um, because the updates will be should be personal. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Um, so quick round of, rounds of intros and updates. Uh, so they have two new faces here today. Um, so. Uh, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Pedro. I work for Protocol Labs. Uh, I'm the leader of the Dynamic Data and Capabilities Working Group. We work on uh, things that make uh, decentralized applications on top of APFS possible, try, try to, um, namely uh, collaborative uh, real-time data types, RDTs, identity, and capabilities, as the name so says. Um, then we can jump for the next in line. I think I, uh, Andre, uh, Souza, yeah. want to go? Souza. Yeah, of course. I am Andre Souza. I work at Moxie Studio. I'm collaborating with Protocol Labs on some apps. We tried and uh, developed a concept which was Kipster and which evolved for the Discussify right now. That's an app that uh, Satazor is already working on, the, on the develop, development side. And now I'm focusing on IDM, which is an app for the identity, the centralized identity. Cool, thank you. Uh, next in line is the other Andre. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm uh, Satazor on GitHub and Twitter. Um, my name is Andre Cruz. I live in Portugal, Porto. And um, I'm com currently uh, working on an app called Discussify, which essentially is a decentralized app where you can uh, create comments and um, basically comment on any web page. Um, and essentially, I'm, I'm working on an extension right now where you can install the extension and a sidebar will pop up and um, we'll open the discussion where you can create comments, edit comments, remove comments, and so on. Um, this application is using uh, all the technology that Pedro um, he has been working on, um, such as PSTAR and so on. Um, and also, uh, I'm we're uh, kind of working on uh, identity uh, solution, which is um, the IDM, as uh, Andres was uh, told, told, told you guys. Um, so I essentially made an RFC, and we are um, conceptualizing the or creating the concept of the, the, the formation identity solution that I've said. That's basically it. Cool, thank you. Uh, Jim, you're next. Okay, so this is my first first time here. Um, so I'm based in Vancouver, Canada, and um, yeah, I'm work, going to be working on uh, I guess PeerStar app and um, perform trying to uh, use PeerPad as a to sort of exercise the library and try to get PeerPad working really well as well. And uh, any all the other libraries that use PeerStar app, I'm sure I'll be working with those too. Awesome, thank you, Jim. Uh, uh, Jim, just for clarification, he um, has been working lately in the little CRDT stuff. Uh, he did, he did a, uh, mostly on the DAT uh, universe, right? And uh, co-authored or even authored a bunch of libraries uh, that that uh, are underlying um, that 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 part. He did a demo also uh, that you can can perhaps point out to later, and uh, 
a blog post at least and he is uh, is i'm very happy that he's now joined us um to to help us uh, in this in this part he's very interested in in collaborative data types i think and mm -hmm. also identity right jim mm -hmm. yeah that covers it pretty well yeah thank you um dirk uh last but not least Hey, I'm Dirk. Um, I'm originally from Australia, but I'm living in New York right now. And yeah, I work at a giant corporation right now, but uh, eventually, hopefully, I'll be able to work full time on cool open source stuff like you guys. Uh, so I've been contributing to uh, IPFS, particularly on the name system. And right now, I'm working on IGIS, which is like a, kind of like a source code manager like GitHub or Bitbucket. And it's based on IPFS and uses um, CRDTs for, for some of the, the new stuff we're building. So I have a bunch of questions for you guys. Cool. Cool. Uh, is it, is it, it will, does it aim to be self-hosted instead of you being using GitHub? Yeah, yeah, that's the idea. It's, well, it's hosted uh, in a decentralized manner. I'll show you guys in a little bit. I'll do a demo. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Dirk. Um, all right, so let's, Resume the schedule. Okay, so, all right, uh, we can add the items to agenda. You, um, okay, so let's go through um, our stand-up um, things that have concluded like quite briefly. So it's it's been a, a long time since the last, the previous, um, meeting uh, we intend to make this like bi-weekly but then we had a lot of people on vacation intermittently so we didn't i think like we, we skipped for more than a month so a lot of things um which i'm not sure that i told in, in the last meeting um from my side js delta cdt's library demo which is a video on youtube there's also another video for lab day something that me and Andre Cruz did when we were at uh, after the web summit on San Francisco last month. Um, I released version 0 0.7 of Peer Star app, which the bunch of uh, uh, fixes and small small typos, uh, which is not yet deployed on, on, on PeerPad uh, because of some, some pinning issues. Um, some new Peer Star packages, so Peer Star React, so high order components for, for Peer Star. Um, Peer Star Network Visualization uh, and Peer Star Network Visualization for React, which is a component that, that we attach to a collaboration. And you can see how the network topology is forming, what are the traffic and some statistics on, um, on some of the, uh, on, on the, the peers that, that, that uh, are part of that collaboration. Uh, also, I think I haven't told you this, uh, at least not, not here, the pinning service is, um, a new thing, not thoroughly tested, but we, we aim to deploy uh, somewhere. This will increase uh, to deploy it in, on, on live. This will increase the the possibilities of so the persistence of of CRTs, um, so that you may people may work disjointly in time, but still being able to see each other's uh, changes. Um, other than that, onboarding Jim. Um, to work on, on PeerStar and PSR app, as, as it was said. Also, uh, two things that are related to research. So a research grant for Viktor Vichenko uh, is working on uh, uh, is working on a lot of uh, things on top of um, annotation and uh, CRDT, so all pure op based CRDTs. Uh, that's in response to our uh, RFP uh, program, and we like. Two weeks ago, we were grant, uh, his uh, uh, proposal was was approved. Also, the other uh, uh, there was a student, well, a candidate student for a PhD program, Adrian. Uh, so we uh, we also going to sponsor um, his uh, thesis starting on February, and we're very excited to to be, be working with them. So we, it's both of these research uh, fields are working towards. Uh, the, the problems that we open problems that we stated on two RFPs, um, uh, which are linked somewhere in dynamic data and capabilities uh, working group, and also on the research um, repo on protocol apps. 
uh, GitHub. Uh, Peter, which university is Adrian from? Is um, is going to study. He hasn't decided yet which university he's going to study in, do his PhD in. But I know he was working and studying in Braga, Minho, in north of Portugal, with uh, Carlos Baquero and yeah. Ali, I think, Ali Shoker. But I'm not sure. He's either working. Uh, well, there's 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 some some possibilities of 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 very prominent people that are going to be the co advisors for his PhD program. Okay. Uh, but but like not not in Portugal, not in, pro most probably. But it's still it's still in the works. But uh, this is his candidacy is approved and we're moving forward. Uh, and perhaps he'll be joining us in in the future. Um, cool. So. That's it for me. Um, I have some things that I may want to work next, but I, I want to uh, spend some time on, on planning yet. So I have to define your, we have to define your QRs for the next quarter. So that's mainly my, my work for the, for the, the next few days. Um, all right, that's it for me. Let's go to, well, actually I changed the order. I came first, sorry, Andre. Andre, uh, so do you want to, to go uh, ahead? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I can start. Yeah, it's it's okay. way, qu way quicker. quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've, con I've concluded everything for this Casify regarding UI, uh, UI elements and style guide. Um, I also looked up for all the user journey scenarios we are using for this first MVP. Can you guys hear me well? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay, okay, gotcha. Uh, the user f uh, flows were prepared with port scenarios and block stack. Uh, I've also prepared the browser extension specs end off for Salazar. Um, I've started and concluded the UX for some scenarios regarding IDM, um, just like for uh, claims and proofs and uh, some scenarios that user needs to, to, to do. Uh, now in progress, I have the IDM branding, the overall look and feel, the logo type, the symbol, and everything associated with it. I've run some, some tests on the, on the concept and look and feel, um, and also, yeah, and some, some pages, uh, some higher level of UX was already prepared as well. And for, for now, that's it, and, and I'm, I'm continuing with, with that work for now. Just, just one question, Pedro. Uh, can Andre uh, so they like have uh, five minutes in the demos, um, the de demos part, just to show some screens of IDM, um, so that uh, people here can um, make sense of what IDM is and what eventually will will become later on. Oh, yes, I was going to ask him that. I think okay. Dirk Dur okay, has, has also something to show us, uh, hopefully, and then and then Andre can can go ahead. Um, that would be awesome. Thank you. Okay, so in the end, we will show. Uh, okay. Yeah. The Thank you, guys. Part. Okay. So, um, in my yeah, part, yeah, concluded. So, I've, as Pedro mentioned, we have been in San Francisco uh, presenting um, a workshop around Peer Star App um, Library. Um, so, I've been working on that and, and concluded that. Um, I myself, I have concluded the Discussify application authentication flow uh, with Uport. Uh, I actually left a video uh, there on YouTube so you can guys check can check it out um, so for now we're using Uport, but later on of course uh, we want to be using something different um, which is uh, the identity manager which Andres Sosa will be showing some screenshots um, moreover I've been working on setting up the Discussify uh, extension um, so I've I've encountered a lot of issues with uh, developing extensions on, on Chrome and Firefox. Uh, mainly do we do, um, do it to CSP, which is content security policy and CSS styling. So essentially we can't have um, like content um, working directly on the page because we'll hit a lot of CSP uh, errors. For instance, uh, pictures of users uh, will be uh, requested, but Chrome will eventually um, 
uh, bought the request saying uh, that there is a CSP uh, error because sites are uh, some sites are very strict on their policies. So I had to get around that by using iframes, and because of iframes, I have to uh, lift the state to the background script of the the extension, and I have to use message passing uh, to communicate between the, the iframes and the background uh, script, and for the styling part. Um, I, I've used Shadow DOM to isolate the styles so that styles of the extension doesn't conflict with the page itself. Uh, so this has been a lot of uh, challenging for me, uh, but I think it's uh, pretty nice uh, and the solution right now. Uh, also, I've been working in the um, um, like the browser, the extension icon stat status, uh, which essentially you can click that. You the you, you can see the the status like it's loading, it's enabled, it's disabled, and some and in any case uh, some error occurred. You see an error there. Um, and I've been working on you know setting up the development development environment such as hot 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 a reload uh, of the code as as I change it and compile it. And that's it for Discussify extension. And also, I've been working with Andrea Souza on the initial IDM uh, screens uh, that we'll be demoing later on. I also will show some demo um, on the current state of the extension so that uh, you guys can see the current state of it. And that's it. Thank you. Um, Jim, you want to tell us what you've been working on? Um, sure. Um, so it's just been my first two weeks here. I joined, uh, <laughs> Pedro's on vacation, so it was, I thought I was going to join the 10th, but then they sent me the contract stuff and it was the third, and I thought, oh, well, I'll just start then. Um, so I, I had lots of time to get really familiar with uh, the PeerPad uh, code and the PeerStar app code under, underneath it. And um, I, I I started by taking PeerPad and I made a, a cut down version of it called PeerPad Nano, just like take, take away all the styling and most of the React stuff. It's just a better space for experimentation. And I've just been sort of peeling off the layers and doing lots of little experiments and finding lots and lots of uh, per performance things and things where you don't think things don't sync and that. So I'm just sort of getting a, a feel for where the, where the work is with that. Um, I, I did actually stumble across an actual bug so in the CRDT. So it was uh, if you delete a whole bunch of content and then go back and then you type something in, it would like put it one character before where it was supposed to be. So uh, I traced it down to a little bug in uh, just one of the algorithms. Just needed an extra little loop to take care of that particular edge case. Um, and uh, this is this is just really recent, but uh, I, I read all the the uh, Andre's uh, de uh, de decentralized ID authentication stuff, and that looks really interesting to me. I was trying to pair that up with some of my, I've, I've built a lot of authentication things over the years. So and then uh, I, I got one of these uh, USB um, web auth. And so Google's been doing a real big push on web auth and so I wanted to try that. So I bought one of these little keys and I've been trying that out. And it's funny, just after I ordered it, they actually launched it into Android, so I could actually do it on a fingerprint sensor. If you have an Android phone, you can use a fingerprint sensor and use the web API for that now. So that that's really, so I've that's got nice. two different things to play with. Apparently it works on, if you have a new um, MacBook Pro with the, with the touch bar, it's got a fingerprint sensor. It'll work on that as well with Google Chrome beta. So. Oh. So that's sort of interesting. So I try to think like how would that fit into uh, yep. an identification thing. I think like people will use fingerprint sensors or face ID on their phones or on their laptops to secure their secrets. And also WebAuth then like interfaces with the, the Google or well all the web browsers, they have the password managers built in. So that's how that's the JavaScript API for that. So so that that would uh, kind of replace the master key for in so in so you you could store private private keys on an enclave that will be in hardware yeah. right it's not really designed to be like what they call a hardware security module where you can do encryption on it so it's really only for authentication so it it'll have a private key stored on the key or in your fingerprint sensor or whatever 
Um, but you can't use, you can't get that key out. You can't oh. use that in crypto stream. All you can do is send in a challenge and it'll sign it. So okay. it's like signing only. So it would be good for, um, it's very, I'm, I'm trying to get my head around it too. Like how would it work in a decentralized way? And uh, it's hard to figure out actually how that's actually useful in a decentralized thing because you're already trusting your local machine. Yep. So it's good for proving yourself to, uh, a centralized service that you are who you are and then you can so like that might be a, a way like if we want to have secrets you could maybe have uh, an extension or something and use these things to store the secrets in the extension or in a hardware wallet or whatever and then you can like check them out and things yeah maybe good for for personal identification so that you can port your yeah. uh, your your profile around safely. Yeah. Yeah. So like yeah, it's definitely, uh, I can see people will want demand this because you, it's basically getting rid of having the need to remember passwords. So mm -hmm. that's a really big deal. So yeah, we um, need to, to see how that fits in the, in yeah. the DID stuff because yeah. uh, the IDs assumes, um, um, you know, a public ledger like a blockchain or something so that we can validate stuff. Uh, to check, like fetch the the public keys and so on, mm -hmm. uh, and with the hardware hardware key or hardware USB, um, that information only lives in the in the in the USB key and doesn't yeah. live in the blockchain. So you have to go to get around it. But uh, the the finger the fingerprint part is very interesting because uh, I mentioned in the in the RFC that um, all the information that is stored in the app is encrypted. Uh, with something and that something uh, as a bare bones as a fallback is always a password mm -hmm. but we can you can decrypt uh, like your private key with your fingerprint if the hardware and the and the machine you you have supports uh, that kind of uh, stuff mm -hmm. so I, I'm, I will want to, to dig into that because I have a, a Mac and I, I have um, like the sensor to, to the fingerprint sensor if it allows uh, decryption Sorry, if it allows decryption, it's, it's uh, Jim mentioned it was only for for signing. Okay, yeah, I have to um, read, it, read about I it. I mean, you can you can use it to prove your identity to something else um, that you're the person, so you don't need a password. But then, what is that something else? You know, if it's already on your local machine, you already sort of trust you. <laughs> so or or your <laughs> so so uh, it can act as a key, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. no, nevertheless, I think the, the fingerprint part, uh, which is completely different, but uh, if there's some kind of uh, native bindings to, to, um, to Node.js and if we, if we make the, the, the app installable as um, a native app, the mm -hmm. fingerprint part will be interesting to decipher or decrypt your um, private key in the IDM yeah. uh, to like authenticate and to, to encrypt and decrypt and so on. Yeah. Yeah, I think like uh, if there's like a, a like a, a Node.js service, it could be a local host on your laptop. It's not gonna work on your phone, but um, yeah, you know, you could, put, you, you could store the secrets in there and then use the fingerprint sensor to prove that you're the person who's allowed to get the mm -hmm. secret out into the web browser. So mm -hmm. yeah. uh, use that for encrypting scenes. So, yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll send you a, a, a link to the demo after. And you can try it on your laptop. Sweet, cool. Uh, I think Dirk, uh, are you? Um, well, obviously, it's your your. Um, perhaps you want to do two in one. Uh, say what you've been working on and and kind of show us that, that too. Sure. Like dem demo style. I'm not sure if you have something. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Let me share my Thank screen you. here. Um, Let's see. I'm trying to figure out how, where's the screen sharing thing on this? Near the bottom somewhere. In the middle, this is. Oh, yeah, I see it. Okay, cool. Okay. Cool, okay, so can you guys see that? You can see my screen? Yep. Mm -hmm. 
So what we've been working on is, we call it IGIS, Interplanetary Git Service. Um, so it's based on IPFS. Um, let me show you. So there's a, an actual version you can use on the web, uh, IGIS.io, in case you want to follow along with this demo. Um, I'm going to run it locally because I have a couple of local changes. So let me just find my local copy. Okay, so we've got a couple of demo repositories in there. Uh, so I'm going to take a look at the Go IPFS repo. Um, and so what it's doing right now is all of this uh, repo is stored on IPFS uh, through the IPLD interface. So there's like an interface between IPFS and Git. Uh, and so all the, the stuff that it's retrieving is going through that interface, getting it from IPFS and then displaying it in your local browser. So this works pretty much how you would expect, you know, from uh, GitHub or Bitbucket or whatever. I can drill down through directories and then I can uh, go and open a file and, and look at its contents. It's pretty fast because it's local, yeah? <laughs> yeah, so I actually, uh, I have a lot of stuff cached locally, but it's actually pretty quick anyway. I think it's, uh, it's connecting to a server, you know, it's, it has a peer that has all of this stuff on it. So it's probably going to be pretty quick, but eventually once IPFS uh, becomes widespread, it should be almost equivalent to HTTP. Um, so let me show you a couple of things we can do here. So one thing we have is a list of commits. So for this particular branch, the master branch, uh, this is gonna load all the commits that have been made against this branch. Um, and so then I can click into one of these and this is gonna load all the changes that have happened in that commit. So this is kind of a crappy uh, CSS style sheet at the moment, but we'll make it look pretty eventually. Um, <laughs> I'm not a designer. This is uh, designed by programmer, unfortunately. <laughs> so then, let me show you. Uh, let me show you the kind of pull request functionality. Nice that you have like uh, think about the placeholders while while it's still fetching. <laughs> yeah, I just implemented that recently because otherwise it was a little bit painful. <laughs> For some reason, it's running a little bit slowly right now. I'm gonna grab one that I prepared earlier. Okay, so uh, so this is what looks what it looks like when you want to compare two branches. So you can see in the URL here, I'm comparing the master branch with this branch, feet core API swarm. Um, so it's going to load up uh, the diff basically, and then all of the commits that are the difference between those two branches. And then of course I can click into these commits and see exactly what changes were made in each one. Um, you didn't uh, praise to the demo gods. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I swear to God, it was working uh, beautifully a minute ago. <laughs> so unfortunately, it's a little bit slow. But once it uh, once this loads, it's going to give me a button where I can create a new pull request. Uh, so once I've created a pull request, it's going to create a screen like this where. It shows all of my commits, all the changes that have been made, and then I can actually uh, enter in uh, comments. So this is the part that I'm using CIDTs for. So basically this list of comments is an RGA, replicable global array, uh, and that's shared across, you know, across all the, the peers. So hopefully this is gonna work. Do you have any kind of like, um uh, ownership uh, proof or, or mechanism to prove ownership on, on the comments? Yeah, so right now it doesn't. But what I was planning to do is basically you just sign all of your own comments. And so when you want to make an update to a comment, it'll, each, of the, each of the comments is actually its own RGA. And so it'll just add that update as another entry in the RGA with your signature on it. So that when it comes to render time, you can just check that the signatures match. Okay. Are you signing with uh, with which key? Uh, so the, we're we're working on the authentication mechanism now, but basically, a user is going to have 
uh, a username, avatar, and then a, a private key, private public key, so they can sign stuff. Okay. So let's see if this works. Come on. It will appear eventually. <laughs> yeah, 42 minutes ago, this worked absolutely perfectly. <laughs> You'll just have to believe me. Um, so I think that's about it. Then, oh, I'm also using uh, some around here. Oh, yeah, so I'm also using a CRDT similarly for the list of uh, pull requests. Um, so once again, this is just an RGA. So there's a, there's a few open issues around this that I'd love to have you guys input on. Uh, so one of them is when you have a list like this of something, so in this case it's a list of comments, at the moment each of those comments is an object in the IPFS and then the stuff that's in the RGA is basically just a link to or a reference to that IPFS object. So I don't know, is that how you guys would recommend doing it or should I just put all of the data in in the CRDT? Uh, I'm using a similar approach in, uh, in Discussify. Actually, each comment is actually, uh, uh, the same thing. It's uh, uh, stored on uh, IPFS. I just stored the, the CID and some other information. Uh, so it, every entry, entry is very tiny. Uh, because we could do a different approach, we could do a different approach but uh, it will be uh, quite complex, which would allow us to do pagination and streaming and so on. Uh, but um, we eventually, you know, just uh, opt out uh, for that and keep it simple. But eventually, uh, we want to like scale to thousands and thousands of comments. And this solution that you have and that I have doesn't scale to like one million, two million entries because it will take a lot of time to to download the 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 comments. Even if they are just CIDs, it will it will take some time. Like you don't expect like 10, 10 uh, megabytes of, of bandwidth or uh, bytes, megabytes to, to be downloaded over your phone just to show the comments, right. the first two, 20 comments. Um, so eventually we'll, we'll be uh, looking into a different solution, but we, we didn't uh, actually research on that yet, just yet. Okay. So, so the, the, I think that the approach would be where you, where you want, where you want, um, um, collaboration, yeah, you could, you could use a CRDP, uh, but if you don't, you don't want collaboration, or you don't want to edit in multiple devices, you you just point to an IPFS record, or if the data, data is small enough, just embed it in in the value uh, itself of, of the CRDP. That's for our main approach. But yeah, pagination is is something that that we have to 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 figure out because right now we have to calculate as as Andres said, calculate the whole um, array. Uh, so that we can display it, and obviously, that is not very scalable. Um, yeah, it's a similar problem that I'm facing actually displaying the the list of commits because mm -hmm. I have to go and retrieve them one by one. You know, so it's like super slow. Yes, but 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 yes, but if you just just fetch the the, the, the entire CIDs, well, yeah, it would be not not very optimal, but it, the size would be minimal. And then you can load each one of them in as as required and as synchronously. Mm -hmm. um, that's I think we discussed this some time ago, Andre, um, to be able to, to do that. And we, we went through several iterations and several yeah, yeah. We did. Uh, several uh, different tra trade offs that we can have. Eventually, pagination um, pagination will, will be like a tree like structure. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that will be like a, a tree-like structure, which we we can, which, well, perhaps a fixed size uh, a tree with a certain branching factor, and um, and decide and decide on that. Um, but right right now we haven't hit that that problem. Yeah, uh, just one one thing uh, to be careful. Um, in this case, if I, we the, the data model is not just the, the, C, the CIDs, an array of CIDs. We store the CID and some other info. One of them, uh, one of the properties is the size of the CID in bytes. Because um, we, you don't want to like be fetching a CID that is like one gigabyte or two gigabytes because someone is trolling and uh, is uh, 
you know, it created that CID on purpose. And, mm -hmm. you know, you, you suddenly you are downloading one gigabyte of, of data from your phone. So if the entry says that it's just, you know, 100 kilobytes or 100 bytes, whatever, and it's signed, you can fetch to that amount of bytes and discard the other bytes. Just one, one, one small thing uh, that we are uh, going to implement and um, perhaps you, you should uh, some, uh, like have so, something similar to prevent um, you know, uh, your interface to be crap because someone is, or filling your, your disk because someone is trolling <laughs> in the comments. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. You, you, are, do you have uh, anonymous comments, Andre? Are you planning to? Uh, at the moment, uh, we don't. Uh, so everything is signed with uh, with um, you know the ADM part, IDM thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then and then there is um, there's also uh, your structure. I don't know if you if you're going to start, you're going to support uh, um, a nesting of comments. Yeah, um, I will. But but Andrei Andre is planning is planning on that also. And we yeah, about, about essentially, that. It's, it's a flat it's a flat um, RGA as as you said. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have like the parent comment or the parent ID comment. Mm -hmm. So after we fetch the whole uh, RGA, we can have a view uh, of that RGA that is a tree. Uh, that is not 100% uh, populated because the CIDs themselves contain the comments and the user that made it and some other information like the date and so on. So it's it's very performant to, uh, until you reach like a millions and uh, millions of comments because it will take some time to download just the index. I call it the index because it's an index. It's not actual co actual comments. Mm -hmm. But Andrea, do, do you resort to... <clears throat> sorry, do we do... Do you resort to using an RGA or just a loose set? Because uh, I'm not, yeah, I'm not uh, yet implemented it, but uh, uh, I'm not sure. I have, I have uh, some notes on that matter in the document. Yeah, but, because uh, the, the RGA, at least if you, if you remember discussing this like a few months ago, the yeah. RGA, the client that dictates where where the insertion is. You don't, you don't just you append. Don't there is, we don't there is no it. append uh, uh, um, only RGA. Well, I think that could be, but but the RGA is is not. You can insert in any in any position, mm -hmm. so you can just insert yourself in the middle of history. But if you each one of the entries is is, is in a set and, and it's loosely ordered, and then you order it by causality, then timestamp. So you order it in a causal way that that you know that this comment originated that comment, uh, even if it's not in the same thread if it's after so if we embed that causality information inside uh, the object itself then you can avoid those types of attacks where you bump your your comment to the past or to the, to the future I mean, I mean you can, you can yeah. so it will be a causal uh, ordering and then uh, yeah a causal a causal ordering because it will offer offline offline um, so comment. So you can, you can create a comment that, that is after comment 10, for instance, you get yeah. comment 11. So or someone else is, do, is doing that at the same time, uh, and then you're offline for, I'd say, a, a, a week, then your comment should still appear yeah, yeah. before the, those new other comments after that, that point. So yeah. that's, that's something I think to think about, Dirk, in, in terms of, of how you, you want to model the, the, the CRDT, uh, because an, an RGA is prone to ga gaming, right? So yeah, yeah. yeah I, um, I read the paper that you referenced actually by Weber uh, with the, the, the causality that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I'm, I'm trying to remember how I figured this out. I think I was doing, uh, like I make a reference to the parent or something like that. Yeah, that, that, that can, uh, that, that's, a, yeah, exactly. That's, that's exactly that. You can just, just do an append only log and, and, and you can traverse that from, from the root one into right. the others, but there will, there will be branching like for concurrent, concurrent comments and those will commute. So those can be inserted in any, in any order yeah. And, yeah. and you do that recursively. Um, that's, that's, uh, yeah, I'll be working on the data model in the next few days, like in, uh, hopefully in Thursday, I will start it. Mm -hmm. So um, I can show you quickly uh, just a very, let me show you this quickly, the uh, GitHub issue that 
kind of describes how he did this. So, uh, so I'll grab this and I'll paste it for you guys. Essentially, this describes what the like what the data model looks like and how you'd implement it using OrbitDB or PSDAR app. Um, so I'll paste that into the uh, the notes. Thank you. Um, and then the other the other one I wanted to ask you guys about that I've talked about in the chat is we're now looking at doing authentication. So at the moment, you know, anyone can sign up. It's just a proof of concept. But uh, there's like a few different ways we've talked about doing the actual authentication piece. Um, one is sort of analogous to what Jim was talking about earlier, where you you use a signature essentially of your username and password, a hash of your username and password, which derives a secret key. And then that could be like an IPNS key or, or an index into a CRDT or something like that. Um, and then there's a couple of other models that we're looking at. One is a federated model uh, where it's a particular domain is responsible for making sure that usernames are uh, unique and taking care of authentication. And then there's attestations, things like what Keybase does where you can, you can say, okay, I'm the owner of this Twitter account uh, on GitHub. So from one system, you can attest that you're the owner of the, an account on another system. So yeah, we've got a, a GitHub issue there. And if you guys have any comments on how you think we could do this better or more efficiently or whatever, we'd love to hear from you guys. Yeah, I, I can I can leave you a comment there and I agree right. with the, the issue. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, I've been working on um, identity, on, on centralized identity. Uh, have you, have you um, heard of uh, DIDs and uh, DID auth specifically? No. Okay, the idea is decentralized uh, identity identifier. Sorry, um, which essentially have um, you, you store you store um, basically each the idea it, has. Well, uh, uh, it's a standard. You should say that it's a standard, like. Very, yeah, it's a standard. It's a standard. It's, it's an open standard. It's not not something that we have invented, no, yeah. nor uh, like nothing like that. Uh, essentially, the ID is composed by um, a method and the ID, and the method can be uh, anything that is is of like uh, official in the sense that it's recognized recognized as um, a secure method. Uh, there's U port. There's uh, some methods associated, associated with Ethereum and Bitcoin and so on. And essentially you have um, uh, used the blockchain to uh, store, um, store information that can be read by others, but there's no private key stored there, just a public keys associated to an identity. So for instance, I'm Andre and I, ca I can say, hey, uh, here's my, my DID and you can go ahead and fetch my public key to interact with me. I just need to prove control of that public key uh, so that uh, you're sure that I'm the real Andre. But even then, you, you're not sure that I'm the, the, the Andre that you're seeing here because I I've, I've can be imp uh, trying to impersonate someone unless you already know he, he is the ID before and these public keys. But you can have one, uh, one or more. So you have to have some sort of second layer uh, part, which is uh, verifiable claims, is also a standard, an open standard, uh, where essentially you say, um, hey, this DID has one or more claims, sign it by uh, one of the public keys that can be fetched from the blockchain. So you can say, hey, I, I'm Andre, my email is this one, and my Twitter account is this one, and my Facebook account is this one. And that is signed with a public key that you can fetch from the blockchain and verify from the blockchain, which is, you know, uh, enforceable. Um, but all of this stuff, you can read it um, in, a, in a document. Uh, I think I explained Pretty, but, pretty much but, it. In a summary. But that's that's you you that's a self signed certificate kind of thing, right? Yeah, kind of. You can kind have like um, you can say you can something like third party about, attestations. You can have third, like third party yeah. attestations. For instance, Facebook can uh, attest to you uh, something. Your your national bank can can um, attest attest to you something. Your like your social security number or your bank account number or your address. So it's kind of a a web of uh, trust in the sense that um, 
not a wife of, of trust. Essentially, you have, if you trust your bank or you, if you trust your uh, um, social security uh, and you verify the signatures, then you can be sure that if you read an attestation made by the social security number about me, so you're sure that I'm the real Andre, basically. But uh, there's also self-signed uh, certificates, uh, which you know you can use the social uh, accounts and post on social accounts to prove uh, that you are who you say you are, because you already trust Facebook and you already trust Twitter in some sense. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. all of these, all of these is written in NFC. I I put that in the chat uh, so that uh, Jim Pick can uh, post it on the notes as well. Uh, it's a document that is quite big, but uh, if you read it, you'll be like understanding uh, the bits of it and uh, where the decentralized role is heading on in terms of identity. I've been uh, with Pedro in San Francisco in the in the decentralized web summit, so. The idea is verifiable claims and the idea of health was like sp uh, being spoken in, in a lot of workshops and, and talks. So I think this is the thing. This is the, where people are heading on. Cool. Okay. That's really good to know. Thank you. Um, yeah, I looked into a bunch of kind of naming schemes like, uh, like Namecoin and Ethereum naming service and all these guys. Um, and it sounds like they're all, yeah, they're all trying to solve a, a similar problem. I think there's still some pretty difficult outstanding stuff there, like how to prevent people from squatting and, uh, you know, requiring that you have to purchase some kind of currency in order to, to, to enter the blockchain. But yeah, uh, but, yeah I agree. But, I think that's, but, the right but that's, that's naming. That's a different yeah, problem. There's no naming here. There's no naming here. So you just create a, a, like a DID to interact with someone, for instance, or just a global DID that you have for yourself. And that's a string that then resolves to a document. The document may reside in the blockchain or in IPFS, wherever you want, depending on the method. And then that's the string that identifies me. And well, identifies, but does not authenticate. So the authentication part requires a protocol, um, which is the ID of. Uh, yeah, the of. And standardized as well. And that's 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 more. So uh, naming like have like unique names and 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 all those problems of squatting and 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 voting. Yeah. Um, you you can have that, it, but it's on top of the IDs and all of stuff. For it's, instance, it's not, you, not can have, you can have like a naming service a service uh, that essentially emits verifiable claims to the IDs uh, on behalf. Like if you pay something, they uh, test to you that username, uh, but. It's on top of that. It, it, it yeah, doesn't but, require any type of uh, names and usernames. And but the idea is like a phone number. So, like you have a WhatsApp, you don't see the phone number. You just you just see the the, the name eventually when you have the connection made. So it's and it's just uh, it's just like a a name is is something that a handle or a, I don't think it's something that is required for most of the of the systems. I may be wrong, but uh, uh, what, what what we need is is is, is is trust, I think. Yeah. If if you yeah, open the, the document, if you read the the first point, which is standards and foundations, there's basically a summary explaining uh, what what we've been discussing here. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, my take on DID is it's um, it's generally coming from the uh, the blockchain side of things, and you have you had a whole bunch of different blockchain companies coming up with their own identity systems, and they just realized they're not going to be interoperable unless they cooperate. And so at least with the DID, they can say, okay, well, we can cooperate on creating these little identifiers and then the build in resolver systems. And then the yeah. bet is that one, at least one, at least one of these blockchain companies will come up with a, a, or, uh, a system that works. <laughs> or IPID will, will, will be the one because there is a, a method called IPID which mm -hmm. doesn't use any blockchain, just uses IPNS. Yeah, it's yeah. a public ledger. Uh, yeah. But that's, uh, that's just where it's coming from. Like, you know, that's... Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, the, 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 all, all the other ones are yeah. either partially centralized or blockchain. Yeah. yeah. But, but the point of the idea is, is actually to um, bring, bring all these identities um, or ideas and standardize them. So essentially from the developer side, you're just facing a data model that is specified and is uh, concrete and is safe and, and, and uh, future proof. 
so that everyone can agree on and work on. Uh, essentially, of course, you'll have start, um, things using Ethereum and Bitcoin and all of, all of that stuff, like uh, IP, IPFS as, as well. But from the developer side, once they resolve the DID document, is adjacent, which is standardized. Mm -hmm. So just the fetching part or, or the resolving part, as they call it, is uh, like an adapter. You have to build an adapter to fetch from the, the different blockchains according to the DID method. But there's also a library for that. So, Yeah, there's, there's a library, but uh, the pro well, I don't want to elongate too much on, on this DID stuff. I think it would be the subject of like a whole conference or something <laughs> like that that you just witnessed like a month ago or something. But uh, uh, it's, it's like uh, the resolver. For block for IPFS, it's just an IPFS node. But the resolver for blockchain will have to contact most for most of the devices will have to use an oracle because you cannot replicate the entire blockchain, at least Ethereum and Bitcoin on on, like on our side. It's not, it's not yeah. Yeah, you have to use an external service to which can be federated, but, but still still a bit centralized. And 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 you have to, to trust that that uh, uh, the security of, of that that component in the system. Uh, that's that's I think that's the pain point of using uh, uh, the IDs using blockchains. Yeah, I think uh, that uh, Handshake is trying to address that exact problem. Actually, have you guys looked at Handshake? Nope. Handshake. No. Yeah, I can post a link to it. Basically, it's a new kind of uh, naming system that uh, that addresses that problem where you don't have to run a full node in order to to prove claims. Uh, in, in what ledger? In what? It's it's like creating its own blockchain. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that 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 but, that's, but, uh, that could be another another JD method. Yeah. But, but if you think about it, it's like in the future, like ten ten years from now on, you will see, or twenty years from now on, you'll see like uh, Asian people. Uh, uh, using a specific blockchains, so you'll see Europe people using different blockchains, we'll see American people using different blockchains. So the identity, identity and authentication has to have that in consideration. And I think the DID spec is, is correct in that aspect because it's embracing and standardizing all, these, all those different uh, block, blockchains into, into one single output interface for developers to consume. Yeah, the 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 flow, flows may may diverge, as is the case of viewport and other stuff, uh, and also you, you most of the time you have to adapt. That's the pain of I think of using multiple different uh, DID methods. But in terms of the the standard of the document itself, and that's that's really useful. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think whichever like if one of the blockchain vendors like really wins, they like. They're going to have to put a lot of work into the UI aspects of it and make it so it's a smooth flow so that people can use it. Like people aren't going to remember those DIDs because they're long strings and numbers. I mean, it's user hostile. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to have to tie into, you know, whatever Apple supports on their phone, Google supports on their phones in terms of um, federated login type of things. Yeah, I think Microsoft um, I, 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 is working on that. Yeah, good. Uh, Microsoft's actually, uh, I think, organizer of one of the organizers of the DID consortium. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Microsoft's actually a unique spot because they control Active Directory in pretty much every Fortune 500 company has spent millions of dollars on their Active Directory systems. Those systems are never going to get ripped out. So in the corporate world, the, the blockchain people are in an uphill so like, like Microsoft's doing the smart thing, like they're participating in the blockchain side of things because that's the biggest threat to them. So they want to be involved in that. So if something starts to take off, they can just be there and probably buy whoever starts winning. But um, the, yeah, it, there's the, the last mile, which is like, like the UI on this, like um, it's gonna be like, how do you manage multiple identities in, apps and in your browser. So you have to think about both of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Google's done a lot of work on Android uh, where you can, if you log into like one Android app, you'll be logged into all the Google apps mm -hmm. and you log out, you can yeah, they're multiple all identities. Yeah, they're all like yeah, they bridge that, they bridge that over to the web with the, they got something called Google YOLO. You only log yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
just and it, it's, it's a really nightmarish sort of thing but um because they they're trying to open it up to any web page so people can you can set up your website and you can log in one click with a google account but of course you can't like it's a nightmare to have sleep for security have any web page you browse to on the web know what all the google accounts of whoever's browsing to it so they got this crazy protocol and like little iframes and things. Yeah. And they tried to roll it out. Um, they actually did something with OpenID. So mm -hmm. I, I spent uh, a few hours on the weekend trying to compile their stuff, and it just didn't compile. It was all this Angular mess. <laughs> but, uh, but it's interesting that this, they've actually got the spec out there. So, so they, they've got the, the Google one that they're promoting. Um, which is still not ready for prime time. You still like a beta only. Yes, you have to approve your website to try it out. Um, they've talked about it in the last Google I/O, um, mm. but they have an open ID one, which has got no. They've talked about it at all, but they've dropped all this code there in an open source thing. So the block things like DID and that could actually use that. They did the little iframe thing, so you could choose your decentralized ID instead of choosing your Google ID, which I think would be really interesting. But like it's it's a nightmare protocol. So. Bear in mind that IDM also uses iframe to do the the crazy stuff. So <laughs> you know if you try to do it um, to share like a single sign on sort of thing, uh, you, you're fighting the the browser security model. So it's really difficult yeah, to do. This it, on is, the web. So. it is. So. All right, um, we're like five minutes over over schedule. Uh, oh, sorry, can, can you can you you guys stay, stay a bit longer so Andres Souza can demo the current state of uh, well, yeah, I'm fine. Discussify. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to present Discussify or IDM first? Because uh, Sarazora has the yeah. Hey, uh, I, I think uh, Discussify. Yeah. I think because we are short on time, I think uh, the IDM part is uh, better because I think we somewhat showed because something. It's new. Yeah. The in the previous calls. Uh, okay. So. Yeah, I'll show IDM then. Okay. Uh, you have to share the screen. Are you guys seeing my screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, I've started with a. Um, the icon concept for the for the app it has a, a connection between fingerprint, the user profile, and the body muscles to end up with a really simple icon that it can be re translate to all the concepts in a, in a way. So for the look and feel, right now we're, we're using the Gilochet pattern, pattern. It's something used on the passports. Uh, these kind of patterns are present on cache, um, and uh, we're using as a as a detail on some sections of the of the, the yeah, platform. On the money as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, on the money. Um, on the notes. Also, also to to connect this with um, a monospaced font that reveals a bit of the mood of the developer's environment and creates a, a connection with the technical side of the app. So it's a fusion between these two languages for now. But this is a concept. Can you put in full screen, please, because it's it's kind yeah. of small. Can you see in Notion. If yeah, I Notion. Do that. I think it's, yeah. Oh, you have to like uh, you have a view you can put in full screen in the notion. Okay, Here. it's better. It's better. Yeah. Okay. This is just a concept for the home screen right now. Okay. And then I start with uh, some flows, just like the import uh, new ID with IDM, and take a look of um, other scenarios like uh, block stack, uh, the restore key, uh, for example, and um, started with a, a model that accommodates uh, every step on the, on the app. So you have the possibility to import or even create a new uh, import ID. Use your 12 uh, word recovery seed phrase uh, with a icon associated, which is a tooltip to, to inform that you have the 12 words when you create the ID. And then you just type the 12 words, you enter restore, you can create a new password, that will be defined with your new ID. This is the part that I said uh, where you could use like a fingerprint to uh, yeah, encrypt, exactly. uh, encrypt the private key of the U-port, uh, the, the port key. 
okay, you set the password, be fine. You're just importing. And yeah, it recognizes it. that's you, Steve Garcia. Your account was imported on this device. If you can add an additional one, you can re-add on the IDs page. That will be present on the, on the sidebar here on top. Okay, let me continue. So the new ID will be uh, created afterwards, after the MVP. It's not uh, needed for now. Here, we, I'm going to present the how can you claim a, a social account, or in this case, the Twitter. For example, I've, I've uh, looked up to how it works on Keybase. They create uh, three options, which is the uh, uh, claim with a key, Keybase command line, the, the bash plus CPG plus CURI, which I don't know what it is, <laughs> and the most common one the, in the browser. So I, I've drawn that, that example. You are on this page. Let me just um, have the, the sequence. Uh, let me see. It's not here, but imagine that you have a, a page with all the social accounts you can connect to, and you, you're going to select Twitter, and then, yeah, the model will appear. You select your handle or your, your username. And then continue. You want to choose between browser or command line in the browser. So you're going to create a, a, a unique link um, to verify yourself. You need to tweet this. After you tweet, you have the, the notification that you need to uh, stay with your tweets up so you cannot delete it. And yeah, that's it. Okay, this was a, the previous version for the home page, so ignore it for now. <laughs> uh, when you select your ID, uh, you can see your applications. Also, here we have the applications overview, but there's, a, there's another page where you can see the social accounts, which is here. Your recent devices, recent claims, and then the applications. This doesn't have a sequence because I've started with the UX based, then I just applied some colors and overall I couldn't feel, but the sequence is not done because that's, that's the next step. <laughs> just uh, be in mind of that. Can you show us the dedication screen? The, sorry? The part where like uh, PeerPath uh, wants uh, the information about the user and the user authenticates himself? Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to jump to sketch maybe. It's better. Okay, okay. okay. Please let me know if you can see it perfectly or not. So uh, Jim Pick, the part that um, Andres Rosa will show is actually a dot indication part where you like are in PeerPath and you click a button, log, a login button, and what what it uh, what it happens is that we create an iframe to communicate with the uh, IDM, which is on another do domain, uh, and use the post message API to exchange messages. Uh, in this case, what we will show is uh, that indication screen pops up. Uh, he enters the password that he previously put to encrypt the private key, and he, he, he shows um, a button to approve, and if he approves, the, there's communi a communication between the, the identity manager and the iframe on the peer path uh, with, that's the screen, with the information like the name, the photo, and so on, all encrypted and, um, and uh, signed by the IDM. All under the hood. Would you have a, like a profile or a, 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 like if you have multiple identities, could you choose yeah. one at this point? If you saw the preview screens on, uh, Andre, can you go into the, the other screens you are, where you have like the yeah. sidebar? I'm if you just, look on the left side, you, you have like the photos on the left, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's multiple identities. So you yeah. can have your personal identity, you can have your company's identity, you can have your, sh your sh uh, child identity because he's under, under okay. age. And so on. So when you click in PeerPad, you click the like login button. You get the it it opens. Uh, can you go into that screen again? Yeah, sure. Just swap it. It perhaps. will show this screen. Uh, it will show this screen. And here you can select uh, uh, the identities. Oh, is that that little drop down in the top? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. And you can choose whatever identity you had set up on IDM. 
Okay. Uh, bear in mind that this just works locally, but uh, later on we can expand that and make it, make it work on on mobile phones like uh, iPhones or iPads and so on, Android devices, by having some kind of communication between peers. Like imagine a way to communicate between uh, your iPhone and, and your local device or, or um, an app that is uh, running somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and, and essentially if you prove that the device is correct by, by scanning a QR code or something like that, like that you can have authentication using, um, using a IPFS to communicate and exchange messages uh, without having to run locally. Like you can uh, log in on your iPhone and so on. But for now, this concept is just local to prove it, that it works. And later on, we can add uh, uh, external login afterwards. I think about it. Cool. Okay. Uh, should I proceed? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. This is just a concept for the profile page when we are going to display the uport, the ID, uh, or an, any other uh, way to create ID. Uh, edit profile, uh, display the most recent that I was uh, telling previously, the devices, uh, applications, and social claims. So the possibility to edit your profile, uh, just you just go from this link to another model. The, all the models are created on the same way that uh, it's uh, way easier to for the dev side to create something that requires action for the user. So everything will be standardized in that way. That's something pops over the, the page. So yeah, you can change, upload a new picture, remove it, uh, change your location with a suggestion autocomplete when you're selecting the input, type your email and save changes. Okay, this is not a, uh, the first time welcome flow, it's not uh, necessary for the MVP. This will be created afterwards, empty states, I need to work on that. And this is the possibility to see all the devices that you use, the ones you revoked, the ones you accessed previously, and the actives, for example. And yeah, that's it for my side for now. Uh, there's also another uh, flow that uh, Andrea Sosa didn't design yet, which is the, the signing flow. Sign, yeah. Which I have the copy here, but the, the screens, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> so imagine that you already authenticate on PeerPath, and PeerPath wants to uh, sign something really important. Uh, so uh, similarly to the authentication model, you will be prompted to, hey, uh, uh, PeerPad wants you to sign this. I, know, I don't know if this is uh, the correct human language uh, or... Uh, uh, semantics. The, yeah, the, the semantic yeah. to show or to re write in English, but uh, PeerPad wants you to sign this and, and uh, the payload, payload will be there and you can sign. And again, you have to put the password to sign. There's also another way of signing that is not that intrusive, doesn't require you to put a password, but it's less trustful because yeah. if you leave your computer open and someone is using the application on your behalf, you'll be using, you'll be signing stuff that you want, you don't want because it, it wasn't you that you were using the, the device. So there's two ways of signing, one more strict and another one more uh, open or more um, frictionless, frictionless. Yeah, yeah the, the signing thing is very, very interesting. Like I've actually had people come to me and say like the number one application they want to see on decentralized web is like, you know, like DocuSign or there's a few other big uh, w websites. Like if you go to buy real estate, you know, the real estate agent sits you in front and there's like forms and forms and forms. And you just have to click on all these different things. But it's usually like, you're signing, you're, you're like uploading a picture of your signature, like that, and they say, oh yeah, this is official, this is legal. Yeah. And, um, and, and then the real estate agent has to pay hundreds of dollars a month for the service, and it's not even like secure. It's like, this is the sort of thing that should just be built into the web. Yeah, I agree, but uh, then everyone has to opt to use Uport or something like that, which is, I think that's, that's if people are required to do that, they will. Yeah. So just just to summarize, the, the identity manager is a way for um, like websites require the user to authenticate and to sign stuff in a easy way for the developer side, and also an easy way, uh, an intuitive way for the user experience, where you you have essentially an application that 
manage multiple identities on open standards. That's not, not something that we invented. It's being open, uh, openly made by uh, working groups. Uh, I, I think uh, W3C, I think. Um, so that's basically it. And, and I've written an IRC with all the, the intrinsics and all the, the specific details about it. And I think that's what we're going to do uh, next, after we have Discussify working on in terms of having the, the list uh, working with comments and deletions and so on. And afterwards, we'll have authentication using this strategy, uh, I think. So uh, if, you, if you guys have an opinion or, or feedback and so on, it will be really helpful to, to give in the GitHub. It looks so, really uh, cool. Yeah. Sorry, uh, I just wanted to ask. So this is something that's that's like proposed, right? You haven't actually started working uh, on the yeah. development side. I I put the link on the on the chat. Uh, so in that that link, uh, you have the second part, which is proposal, the identity manager. Uh, it's it's uh, it's there. It's describing the, in detail how the thing works and and all of all of the details. So. But yeah, but uh, Dirk was asking. So, so in terms of, of implementation, you oh yeah, you you, you did you did uh, integrate Uport into Discussify, and then you're going to adapt that into IDM, right? Yeah, essentially, I'm using Uport just to have an authentication mechanism. But later on, I will ditch out Uport uh, in favor of the, of the IDM, uh, and IDM allows allows uh, users to use Uport or to use uh, like BTCR or to use the one from Bitcoin, I'm not sure what's the name, or whatever the ID method there is. Uh, actually, there's like like 10 of them. Ten, yeah. uh, the ID registry, I will leave, leave them in the chat as well. So that link has all the DID methods um, being, being um, like official in terms of the specification is done. So there's um, a couple of uh, Ethereum-based ones and Bitcoin-based uh, ones as well. And some, there's some others like on PFS as well. Um, Sovereign, there's one. Uh, so, uh, Sovereign, I already said it, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so our goal is go one by one and integrate it on IDM. But on Discussify side, on the, on the peer pad side, everything stays the same. The, the developer doesn't need to do specific stuff to integrate with uh, those DID methods. It just it, it should just work out of the box. Cool. <laughs> Modulus key revocation. What? Modulus key revocation. Modules, keys, revocation. Now, uh, everything should work out of the box. Uh, it's what all oh. the <laughs> modules, the key, the key revocation issue, because there, there are some yeah, intricacies yeah. For, for key revocation on each one of the, of the methods. Some support it, some don't, some are thinking about Yeah, it. I've actually created an issue, but yeah. uh, there's no is, final it's, yeah, it's complicated, it's complicated. It's complicated, yeah. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Um, so we're running a bit late already. Uh, does anyone have, have like uh, one quick question? To anyone else? No. If I may, if you have like one minute, Dirk, I would like to ask you a question. No? <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> yeah, about about the so the CDTs that you're using. I think you're using Orbit, right? Orbit yes. TV. Cool. So. Uh, um, and the network topology that that it uses, I, I guess it uses PubSub for for for. Gossiping around the CRDT, is that correct? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. You don't know what, what how, how the, the nodes connect to each other. What what are what are what is the topology not, when you do a collaboration? Like I'm not 100 you... sure. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, I I haven't looked into it in, in detail. I just used it because uh, the documentation was was pretty good, and it seemed like it was uh, uh, it was sort of pretty well formed. But I think probably. PSR app is going to perform a lot better, so you know that was just kind no, of. No, I'm, I'm just curious because yeah, that, that's one of the things that that we are that we, we were particularly concerned about on previous iterations, and that and that we addressed addressed right here. But of course, there are there are still uh, issues and and, and and edge cases. I was just I just want to collect as much information on that subject as I. Yeah, think. let me look it up and I'll uh, I'll get back to you. No, no, if it's 
if you're interested, uh, we appreciate it. Uh, so yeah. also have a look, a look around, uh, look in your identity thing and, and put there some, some, some thoughts and, and links um, on there. But I hope, I hope that, um, yeah, the DID, DID stuff is, is really interesting, Eric. Yeah. Um, anything else from anyone? I wanted to present a demo, but I, we don't have. Oh, you have, you have a demo? It's just one minute. If you if you guys uh, give me the no time, no <laughs> worry. It's really fast. It's really fast. Okay. Can you guys see it? Yes. Okay. So let me. So if you if you see, let me disable. It. If you see here on the right, it's a discussify extension. I will enable it, and uh, the icon appears here. I'm, I will uh, scan it. I'm going to put Pedro out of the, the pop-up. <laughs> so I'm going to scan it. Uh, of course, we're using uh, uPort for now, but later on, this will be IDM. And that's it. I'm authenticated. Nice. That, that's the demo. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, later on, I, like, the next steps will be to uh, implement the actual discussion on, on the page. Great. That's beautiful. Uh, thank you. So, if, if you uh, yeah, if you haven't you put a link to to the the current uh, repo that you're developing that on. Oh well, yeah, I can I can put on the chat and uh, mm -hmm. Jim will copy that. So there's two repos. One for the style guides, and another one for the actually actual extension. I will put the branch because the flow is on a separate branch, not just, just the master. Just some clarification, Andre, because because the for instance Dirt and Jim are not very familiar with it. So you have like like a browser extension. But if the in the future, if the a website uh, uh, admin wants to add this the discussify to it, uh, people will will not require the, the extension, yeah, yeah. right? That that's three face applications mm -hmm. uh, one of them is the extension that's the starting point that there's what we are tack tackling now mm -hmm. uh, there will be um, an embed similar to facebook embed uh, comments where you can just put a snippet like and, the discuss the the other project yeah, yeah. it's like facebook where you put some code and there's comments on that particular page mm -hmm. and the third the third uh, face up is the app itself a website where you can just put the link and you you're commenting there mm -hmm. and but for now we're just doing the, um, the extension uh, mm -hmm. and that's it that, that's a very similar uh, approach to what hypothesis does have yeah, you seen that one it's a web exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very yes. Actually, we want to have uh, annotations uh, later on as a feature where you can comment on specific parts of the page. Like the, imagine there's a fake news somewhere in a website. You can sign all that as fake news mm -hmm. uh, and, and have a whole thread comment, commenting on that specific part of the page. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and then you integrate that with the, with the, the reputation scheme that João Souza was developing. Yeah. The scam scan. And then, scan. <laughs> and then and we solve the web. Also, yeah. <laughs> we'll also be open standard. We comment should, uh, comment and report. <laughs> well, uh, if no one else has any demo or any, any other question, <laughs> um, I think it's more than time that we close this one. Thank you so much okay. for coming. Uh, I'll be posting the notes on the GitHub issue. Dirk, thank you so much for, for coming and presenting. Um, I just, I think it's amazing. Uh, I'm going to be following closely that. Pingus, if you have any any question, we'll do the same uh, as, thank you. as of curious out to you, of curiosity out to you. And um, see you in two weeks, hopefully, right? Bye-bye. Okay, thank you. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Thank see you. you, everyone.